Oh, hey there. This is No More Parachutes. You're watching PDX Spotlight coming at you. PDX Spotlight. Natasha Haynes here with the amazing trio that makes up No More Parachutes. Hello, Hello guys. Hey, thanks for going? having us. We are hanging out at the Hawthorne Lounge. Awesome place, isn't it? It's great. Oh, yeah. Nice and cozy. Very oh. nice. Okay, so I want to find out a little bit more about No More Parachutes. You guys released an EP back in 2013, am I correct? Yeah, we did. And that was entitled Old Man. Yes, mm -hmm. right? that's exactly Interesting right. Interesting title. <laughs> Uh, was that your first EP? Was that your? That was our first with this lineup. Okay. Uh, we had some band changes previous to that, so um, yeah. It was my first appearance, right? So uh, my my first. We had a full length in 2011. That was our first EP. So our first sort of like five song deal. Okay. Yeah. And then Jeff joined the band, and boom. Right. Everything changed. Everything yeah. history was made. History was made indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, it yeah. happens. It happens. <laughs> okay, and then after Old Man, we've got Frightening Situations. Yeah. So that's your newest endeavor. Yeah. yeah. How was that process? It was about, Amazing. it was awesome. Like three or four days just playing songs in the studio. And we probably wrote it over the summer mostly and yeah. recorded it over, like after Christmas. Now, if I'm right, this was funded by an Indiegogo campaign, which, by the way, I have to say, you guys raised like $1,000 over what like you would ask for. So yeah. is there like yeah. secrets to fundraising or? Amy. We Whoa. just have amazing <laughs> friends and, and people family people too. out there got, got a lot of love for us and that's awesome. Yeah. Just yeah. awesome. It's incredible. People came out of the woodwork to yeah. step up and help us out and yeah, doubled our what we expected to get. So. 
And we have a little extra things coming back to them too. So some of them. Yeah, we have lots of great prizes. Mm-hmm. Very nice. We're actually writing an album for people that pitched in a certain amount of money. If you pitched in $100 or more, you get a song written about you. So and we the have next sort of, album? No, not necessarily. We're sort of just recording songs for those people and mm-hmm. as gifts. Yeah. Thank you. We will probably release them as a little set. I want to know where your name came from. No more parachutes for you guys in like a life or death situation. Terrible skydiving accident. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it's, I'm a huge fan of the movie Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. There's a certain scene where there are no more parachutes and the plane is going to crash into a mountain. And short round, Indiana Jones's sidekick says no more parachutes in a frantic moment. And I got a tattoo of that scene actually on my leg. And long, long ago, back in 2009, we were thinking of a name for the band and looking at the tattoo and it just kind of came together. There it was. Yeah. So it's, that's the story. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so Adam, I have to ask you, yeah. were you the one who kind of founded the band and then it, did it take off from there? And yeah. Jeff joined the band later on. So what did it start out as? It started out as me um, and a couple other people um, playing in a basement. And I met Dusty shortly after. So Dusty and I sort of are the founding members of the band. And uh, we met Jeff shortly thereafter. And things came together, mm-hmm. as is. I used to play magic cards.
always, was that always kind of the genre that you guys were focused on? What, what are your influences? I would say we sort of started out a little more indie rock and kind of mellow and things kind of got charged up a bit when we had our previous drummer and things switched around. I jumped on the drum kit and mm -hmm. kind of kept that energy going. Things got a little more punkier. I was a, a fan before I even joined on so, you know, I knew that the sound that they were kind of going for and now that I'm, I jumped on it, I try to try to stay on that path, but I'm, I'm writing too now, so it's, it's all over the map now, really. I we're think just... things were kind of gonzo early on when Dusty and I started. It was definitely in the indie, indie rock vein, but our songs were uh, just sort of strange and out there. And like, I think we've dialed in that pop formula, and that's become a huge part of our band. Um, we, we all love post-punk, we all love like the Joy Divisions of the world and that kind of stuff, and like the New Orders and stuff, but we definitely started listening to more like the Elvis Costello, Joe Jackson kind mm -hmm. of stuff, and like that power pop formula kind of entered into our music and we definitely have songs that have a strong pop sensibility to them and less less ethereal sort of out there style of music and more dialed in. Yeah. All right, so you're still kind of you can still play around with yeah. it, but you guys aren't like set oh, on yeah. a certain genre or anything. We'll always have that sort of experimental yeah. side a little mm -hmm. bit, but we definitely I think with Jeff a lot too. He has amazing pop talents and songwriting talents and I think that we all riff off each other in cool ways that we haven't mm -hmm. been able to before. We all contribute. There's a few songs that Dusty has pretty much arranged already, and I just throw some lyrics or guitar over the top, and then vice versa. Adam will do something, or we'll all collaborate. Yeah. We don't shoot down a lot of ideas. We're just like, yeah. as long as we think it, like we can agree that it sounds good and something that we would like, we pretty much play it. Things have happened super organically. Yeah. We've, we've never had like big head butts or anything over. Mm -hmm. We all sort of just smile, giant, huge smiles <laughs> when someone has a new riff. It's just, it just works. It's yeah. just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's magic. All right. So talking about that songwriting process, do you guys have like songwriting rituals or something that... It all seems so, like, it can come from anywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah, whether it's just a, a line writing. or two and then we'll all come together or someone fleshes out a basic structure and then someone else might sort of rearrange it, we all really pitch in in different ways, I think. And There's so many bands out there, I feel like, where there's like a boss, and they just like write the songs and they tell their band what to play. And I think with us, there are literally three songwriters, yeah. and we all are very like, we're almost like a little communist society. We all <laughs> pitch in, we all do our work, and like, we all have our own song ideas, and um, it takes the rest of the band to fill in the gaps. Where have you guys played in Portland? Have you guys played at some... We've, yeah, all over the place. we've played at, like almost everywhere, like played so many clubs. A couple times at Kelly's Olympian, a few times at, um, what is it, East Ash Street Saloon, Ash Street, Saloon. Ash Street East End, um, Foggy Notion, um, Hawthorne Theater, we opened for the Ataris recently. That was fun. Um, we had our it's CD really release at Katie O'Brien's on Sandy. We love Katie O'Brien's. Fun little home base. Yeah, definitely. We call that our home base. We've had two CD release shows there. People come out, and Jimmy Armstrong, the guy who books, is our good friend. We love that place. Great yeah. vibes over there. All right, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Yeah. I have to mention, you guys said you played at Ash Street Saloon. They have this wicked little green room. It's like a hole in the wall upstairs. Upstairs, yeah. I've up been there. there. The yeah. Little yeah. The little mouse hole. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah. Right? Interesting. Yeah, it is That's, interesting already. Right. Yeah. It's one of the more strange and hard-to-access like, green rooms. You have to, like, tuck into a ball to get in there. Right. Yeah. Oh, 
Five more records and a couple of tours under our belts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I stand behind that for sure. Five years, I can't even see that far. Like we have band practice after this interview, and then I don't know what's going to happen after that. The future is a fog, <laughs> a mysterious fog. Do you guys feel like your process has moved slowly or or fast? I mean, as far as trying to be on the up and coming, you know, in the up and coming music industry, do you feel like you been moving as fast as you want to or I mean I think things have gone really fast for us to an extent because Jeff joined the band in 2012 and like the, that same year we were on like the Portland's upcoming band list Delhi put us on like their most like watched band list of 2012 and like that was the same year Jeff joined the band mm -hmm. our first show was in 2010 and we were kind of under the radar then we weren't playing out a ton so when we really started playing a lot of shows I think people took took note started coming out and good things have happened. We've got a lot of opening gigs for national acts and stuff, so that's kind of where you want to be as a Portland band. You want to be the band people come to as an opening band, and like you definitely want to be in people's radar. So.
situations. What's your next step? Where would you like to go? Is there a tour in your near future? We have been moving pretty well with this with the CD. We just recorded a music video, and I've been in bands for a long time since high school. And just with the amount of work we've been putting in, I think I I really I the sky's the limit for what we want. You know, it just matters. All that matters is like, you know, can we get there? And with at the pace we're going, like, and the the amount of effort we're putting in to these songs, and uh, definitely open for, you know, some national exposure. So far, the touring's been kind of concentric circles, keeping it cheap and tight. And there's so many places close to hit right now. Um, we're looking towards like next year, kind of getting out there a little more. Um, you know, eventually international, who knows? I'd love to go to Japan and play with Poly6. <laughs> that's good. Right, that's I would have yeah. I love those guys. Yeah, Japan would be great. They have some great power pop up there. I think, I think our genre would do especially well in Asia and Japan, for sure. And like Europe would be great too. We have a lot of, Dusty and I are fans of a lot of like European bands and stuff, so it'd be great to see if the scene digs us too. All right, so two are possibly in Asia? All right, only if... That's the dream. Okay, that's the dream. It will happen. <laughs> it will. Right, you got to state it, and then bam, it just... you got to dream like it, and then yeah, reach reach for your dreams. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so I have to ask, are you guys all committed to just the band right now, or do you guys have, like I always say, like a second hustle? Like, are you... Actually, until recently, um, we've kind of had a couple things going, um, especially myself. But I've just kind of stripped everything down just to focus on this band. I mean, that must be hard, I guess, um, trying to get, you know, you guys are trying to put yourself out there, but at the same time, you have to make a living. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I, I work at a bank, for instance, during the day. But when that vault closes, I get, get on the rock gear and the guitar. Come meet yeah. these guys for some fun. Right. But you got the day job. We, we, yeah. all, we all got the day jobs, but you know, the band is what it's all about, for sure. Yeah. Right. As far as creative endeavors, No More Parachutes is number one and the only one for me. So. All right. Well, we want to talk about that album a little bit more. Frightening situations. What's up with that name, guys? Um, it came from sort of. It was inspired by like a Scary Sounds record that I have. And I it said so, like it said it was called Frightening Situations on the actual like record. And it got me kind of thinking about sort of that, just a, it was just a strange title. Mm -hmm. We kind of like riffed off of it and it kind of became our album title too. And it works because as poppy as we can be and some of our sounds are kind of happy, we do have kind of a little dark zone that we kind of mm -hmm. come in and out of. Um, it's a little bit of dark tinge. Yeah, our stuff. Mm -hmm. I think even though our songs may be a lot of times majory and like sound really poppy vibe wise, a lot of times like the lyrical content, a lot of times the subject matter is a little darker. And I think that sure. frightening situations is a good way of sort of balancing both worlds. Yeah. Okay. So it's sort of maybe like a mission statement for that album a little bit too. Yeah. I don't mean to trivialize the name because it's, I mean it means a lot to all of us. It definitely reflects the content of the album. So yeah, as far as the origins go, you know, that's where it came from. Okay. Yeah. And is there, you know, you talk about like your inspirations and, or, and statements, you know, in music. Do you guys have like a statement that you believe like your music portrays or illustrates or? I think, I think for us, we don't really have like a band creed. We don't, we're not a political band at all. We definitely write songs that are personal to us. And I think we're all from the Northwest too. And I think a lot of our songs come from, you know, our experiences growing up here and our experiences sort of, um, however strange or positive or negative they are, they're definitely like, I would say, they're soul songs, they're, um, you know, they're based in, in sort of like the Northwest. So they're, they're all kind of our stories from our lives. So, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of honesty, um, I mean, just from what I've heard of their lyrics and I know of my own, whether it's kind of vague and poetic or to the T saying what it means, I, I always feel like we're coming, we're honest with ourselves about what we're singing about, so, yeah. 
and so it should be. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I, think a lot of, I think a lot of bands are from like maybe they like immigrate or they're they're from another city and they come into another city. But we're all from here. We're all from the Northwest, and like I think that plays a huge part in our music and and like a lot of our content as well. It's we like, went to high school together and saw a lot of the same stuff. So, yeah. You guys go back. Speaking from the heart, yeah. we could say we could say power pop folk songs. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're not we're not a folk genre band, but our songs are folk oriented, and, and at that, they're all based on like the place and you know an area of the world. Stories, okay. stories. Okay, okay, I can dig it. And just make them tight and punchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Punch so up. where can we buy frightening situations? Where can I get a hold of a copy? You can get it from. Um, no more parachutes.bandcamp.com, and it's seven dollars. You can own the you can own the the files. Mm -hmm. It's not iTunes based. We like the idea of people being able to own the files because mm -hmm. they're theirs for they're life. Yours. But we prefer um, if you came out to the show, saw us live. Yeah. The live experience is what it's all about. We want people want you to check us out. There's a whole different energy when you see us live. The songs are going to be fifty percent to hundred percent faster. Would you say? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> which, is, which is always fun. Like, Sometimes. We love Try flexing our muscles and like definitely like amping up the songs live. And it's, gonna, it's a whole different experience. And of course, being able to buy a physical CD is cool too. Yeah. So we it's highly encourage you to yeah. come out. Nice. Yeah. And I have to say, I did hear you guys on Portland Radio Project this morning. Was awesome. Had like, my yeah. app out. Yeah. Nice. And I heard you guys come on. And I was like, very nice. I got to meet with these guys later. I know. That's nice. great. That's awesome. That's exciting. Okay, well, thank you for being here with us today at the Hawthorne Lounge. Thanks for having no us. more parachutes. All right, where else can we find you? Or where can we contact you? I'd say Facebook is huge. Um, like us. Like us on Facebook. You can yeah. find us by searching us or by uh, Facebook slash No More Parachutes Rock is how to find us. So. And we got No More Parachutes.net. Yep, we the website. It's, there's going to be our shows on Bandcamp. And I, I, I representation, and at your local venue, yeah. we'll be around. Yeah, I do. I was looking at it.